As important as having a good car is, a huge aspect of NASCAR is strategy. This is a big reason why NASCAR drivers have crew chiefs, to strategize the race and make sure their setup is good for the race weekend. Whether it's a gutsy call such as staying out on old tires, or stretching the fuel window at the end of a race, strategy calls can be the difference between winning and losing. Today we are going to look at some of the best strategy calls from above the pit box. In 2014, Jeff Gordon had been the dominant car of the day at Pocono, with Dale Jr. following suit in second. The big one would happen on lap 117, bringing out the caution and giving drivers the opportunity to pit. Knowing that they would need to pit again, Alan Gustafson would leave the 24 car out, while Steve Letarte would bring in Dale Jr. for four tires and fuel. Doc? Going to be four, maybe two, depending upon Steve Letarte's call. Listening very carefully. Going to be right side chassis change. They're going to go left side tires. Casey Kane also getting four tires. Strategy here, they cannot make it on fuel. May have to come back in, but if they do come back in, it'll be one can of gas and rights only when everyone else pits. Strategy might work out for the 88 and Junior. Just after the restart on lap 132, Junior would pit again, but would do fuel only since he took four tires during the caution. Gorn would pit a lap later, but put on four tires during his stop, resulting in a much longer pit stop for the 24. As the strategy cycled through, Dale Jr. would take the lead since he only needed fuel and would go on to win the race. One more turn, can he hold him off? He's going to do it. Third win of the season. Pocono goes to Dale Earnhardt Jr. That's what you call the Pocono sweep, buddy. In 2002, NASCAR's all-star race, called the Winston, was divided into segments, each of which consisted of rules. Segment 1 was 40 laps long and required a green flag pit stop. As the laps of the segment wore down, everyone was wondering why Jeff Burton hadn't pitted yet. He had a huge lead on the rest of the field, but would be disqualified since he hadn't pitted. As it turned out, his pit box was ahead of the start-finish line, so he would pit on the last lap and win the stage since he only had to drive down half the pit lane. We're going to have two to go. He, he has to pit here in about a lap. He's got to pit next time by or else. 31, 12. We didn't miss something, did we? I don't think. Steve Park and Mike Wallace have lost touch with the pack. So it's between Ward Burton, Ryan Newman, and Jeff Burton, pretty much, as to which other driver does not advance to segment two. Well, he's got to come to pit road this time. He's down on the bottom of the racetrack. He's not coming. Daryl, what if your pit was before the start finish line? You pitted on the last lap and you only had to jump across the line. Yeah, because the start finish line goes oh all the way across God. the road. That's what he's going to do. That's what he's going to do. That's what I'm trying to say right now. They're on a strategy move right here to make that pit and just go across the start finish line and they'll be good. Wow, this is either crazy or brilliant. We'll, we'll, see. we'll, we'll see here in just a second. Here he comes. All right, he's coming to pit road now. And he has a 26 second lead on Jimmy Johnson. Here we come, guys. How about that? And what he'll have to move, he'll have to move about 50 yards to cross the start finish line. Dick Bergman. Well, here comes Burton. Now let's see if that's in fact what he's going to do. It's going to be a four tire change mandatory. Frank Sauter just calmly sits on top of the box. His crew chief watching all this go on. No fuel, of course they don't need it. They don't have to go very far. Burton now slow in the left rear. Here he goes. And that did it. He made a stop. And here they come for the transfer position. Ryan Newman ahead of Ward Burton. In 2018, Cole Pern would play some race-winning strategy at the end of the Toyota Save Mart 350. Martin Truex Jr. and Kevin Harvick had been even all day, and with being half a second behind the four car, Cole Pern said that they were coming to pit road since it would be tight on fuel. This prompted the four car to also pit on the same lap, but Truex Jr. would suddenly stay out as the four pitted behind him. Cole Pern did not want to race the four car, as they were both extremely strong, so he decided to try to stretch it out on fuel. Here's how the radio chatter went down. Stay out here, Mark. Stay out. I'll pit this time, this time. Stay out one more. Stay out, stay out. 
All right, next time, bye. Next time, bye. Are you going to pit this time? Headed to 10. Didn't hear you. All right, all the way around. First gear to line over there. Three, two, one. First gear, don't speed. All right, stay out, Mark. Stay out, stay out. Got to go about nine more, Mark. The past two laps, the 78 guys were up on the wall. They were ready to pit. Cole Pern kept saying, pit next time, pit next time. Finally, he said, stay out as the four car pitted. These guys are off the wall now. I believe they just baited the four car into pitting when they wanted the four car to pit. Save your tires. Need to run any easier than that? Think, or what do you think? If we need to run easier, let me know. 10 4. Basically, 78 faked us out. They decided to run seven or eight more laps, so I don't know. Kind of screwed us here a little bit, but we'll make the best out of it. The move would work out for Truex, who had nearly a 25 second lead on Harvick when the pit stop cycled through. Although he would lose 15 seconds of that lead by being out on older tires and saving fuel, the strategy would pay off. When he last won at Sonoma in June of 2013, it was only his second career win. Rounding turn 11 and headed for home for Barney Visser and Furniture Row Racing Martin Truex scores his 18th career NASCAR Cup victory. During the 2011 night race at Bristol, Paul Wolf, who was Brad Keselowski's crew chief at the time, selected a pit box right after a timing line which measures the pit road speed. During the final pit stops of the race, Keselowski was able to fly out of his pit box and restart on the front row due to not having a timing line ahead of it. Little strategy and uh, a little Maximizing the pit road speeding rules has uh, shuffled up the front of the running order here a little bit. Yeah, some of these guys certainly have figured out exactly what they can do where the, the pit sick. We see Jeff Gordon, he's by Matt Kenseth, but he takes off. Now watch Brad Keselowski come out of his pit area. He's going to pass both of them. Hill, Brad, you got the car. You got the car, no problem. Two on the pit. This move would give Keselowski the lead, and ultimately, the race win. After the race, NASCAR would double up on the timing lines at Bristol to avoid this in the future. Another race-winning call would take place in the 2019 Coke 0400 after the big one, which took out nearly half the field. With the possibility of debris on the racetrack, many drivers went to pit road with the thought that they were going back to green. Justin Haley would stay out as everyone came to pit road, and a lightning strike right before the green flag would halt the race and give the win to Justin Haley. So, so listen, the one car, and, and, you know, with, with those guys, they made a great call. Kurt Busch, Matt McCall made a call, right? They're going to stay on the racetrack, but NASCAR gave one to go. They said, we're coming to one to go. So that means they think the race is going to restart. So the one car comes down pit road. NASCAR goes one to go, then down to back straightaway. Conditions change. They get a lightning strike. They take, they call it off. So right now, Matt McCall is like, man, I, I was in the right position. You gave one to go. Why'd you give one to go? You know he's upset with that call to change it and then say, hey, we're going back caution. And so now the pace truck is going to bring the field back onto pit road. And we'll go to Marty. Congratulations. Thank you, bud. Go see your family. You're seeing it live. Hey. There's your winner. He's being told right <laughs> He's now. Getting ready to go. Justin Haley has won his <laughs> first ever Monster Energy Cup Series yeah, race. That was awesome, man. Thank you know what I mean? I didn't do anything. I know. Uh, <laughs> I did nothing. You stayed up front all day. In 2022, William Byron was running away with the win at Richmond during a very long green flag run. Denny Hamlin was in second, four seconds behind with 45 laps to go. Chris Gabehart knew that the 24 was too strong for the 11 to run him down, so he would bring the 11 car down pit road, putting them one lap down. Remarkably, Hamlin would make up one lap on William Byron because of his fresh tires and make the race winning pass just in time. Denny Hamlin is there, five to go. Who would have thought 20 laps ago that the 11 would potentially be passing for the lead with five laps to go in this race? Potentially, here it is. And I don't think William Byron is going to have anything for him. Still there, hold your tight. Byron trying to fight him off. Hamlin to the stripe first. Harvick trying to close and take away clear, second. Clear. All clear. Lap cars, four of them under a blanket dead ahead. Turn three, not final time. Not we'll not get there. Wow. Now that's Hold a different Towner, Denny Hamlin. We heard. 
checkered flag for Hamlin. Another strategy call at Richmond would take place in 2013. A late race caution would set up a green-white checkered finish, with cars staying out and going down pit road. Juan Pablo Montoya was in first, while Kevin Harvick was in second. The two would come to pit road and take four tires, resulting in them restarting in 6th and 7th place with two laps to go. Gil Martin's strategy would pay off, with Kevin Harvick remarkably passing seven cars in one lap to take the lead and the win. So here they come, Jeff Burton, Jamie McMurray, two Chevrolets in front of Almendinger, Edward Stewart, trying to thread the middle and make a hole where none exists. There, there goes Carl on the outside. He's got a nice run. How about Kevin Harvick in that 29? Now that's his teammate he's chasing. McMurray got caught out, but way up the hill. Here they come to turn three. Looking for the white flag. Off of four on the outside. Harvick with the lead. Burton, Boyer. Into turn one for the final time. Logano and Carl Edwards. Montoya sixth. One car high, Kyle Busch, no problem. Here they come to turn three. You ought to see what's going on, they're everywhere. And Harvick's got the field in his mirror, the closer. Kevin Harvick wins Richmond. And possibly some of the best strategy ever played in the Cup Series took place during the 1992 season finale at Atlanta Motor Speedway. The championship boiled down to Bill Elliott and Alan Kowicki. The two were tied in the point standings late in the race, but Elliott's five wins compared to Kowicki's two would give him the tiebreaker. Elliott began to dominate and pull away, but Kowicki started to save fuel and was able to lead some laps when Elliott pitted for the final time. Elliott would reclaim the lead and take the win, but Kowicki's strategy resulted in him leading the most laps by one lap over Bill Elliott. The five bonus points awarded to the driver who led the most laps paid off for Kowicki, who was able to avoid a tiebreaker with Elliott and win the 1992 Winston Cup Series Championship. We are not following the winner and the leader of the race. We are focused in on Alan Kowicki, who is going to win the 1992 NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Hey what's up guys, it's KKB. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video, and if you guys did, make sure to leave some suggestions down in the comment section down below so I can make some future uploads like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting my channel, and I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video.